Okay. Hi. Thank you very much. Um, how many of you would like to take classes abroad at international universities? Now, what, what if I was to tell you that it's possible for free at universities like Harvard, uh, California, Berkeley, or other universities? So there are three companies that make this possible and these companies started in 2012. So one year these companies have been working in making free education possible. Coursera, Coursera, uh, Education X, and Udacity. Yeah. And these are what we call MOOCs. Uh, MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Courses. Yeah. So massive. Massive means open registration. Anybody anywhere in the entire world can register. So some classes have over a hundred thousand students. Open. Open, that means anyone, not only in the United States, anyone in the entire world, world can join. And course materials can be downloaded at any time. So there's no limit. You can access these, this information, these lectures at any time. Uh, online. Obviously, these these materials are online on these special websites. And courses, that means they're individual courses. They're not part of a bachelor's or a master's degree. They're just individual courses. So you cannot, you don't pay money, so it's completely free, but you cannot get a master's or a bachelor's degree. It's just individual courses. And so, but this is not new. This is a form of distance education which has been around for hundreds of years, maybe. Since the first mail systems began, universities started sending uh, mail classes. Uh, and then once the internet came about, the universities started making into online classes. Yeah. So let me t tell you about the old model, the what, what how online courses were given before. So it involves you know one student with a computer internet access and paying, you have to pay to access 
courses for certificates or for degree programs, like bachelor's and master's degrees. And there's some downsides to that. Obviously, it's closed because you have to pay money, so most people can't access it. It's expensive. The class size is limited, and it's all based on individual learning. So one person learning by him, by him or herself. So. And because it was so closed, there was a movement to make these classes open. And the next, uh, and there's an, an alternative model developed, which was called Open Courseware. So what happened was they took away the money and they took away the degree or the certificate. So it was just learning for learning's sake. You can access the class but without any acknowledgement that you did. And this was led by universities like MIT in the United States, University of Michigan, Yale, Harvard and other top universities. So this is an example of Yale, open, it's called Open Yale. And this is a class that I was taking before, Introduction to Psychology. And and this is um, a course from MIT Open Courseware. And this was a good advancement, but it also has some downsides. For example, it's designed for individuals, so it's still just one person learning um, by themselves. Um, yeah. So no feedback or interaction. And many of the courses are not complete. So some courses have, you know, just the lectures. Some courses have just reading materi materials. Some courses have just a syllabus. It's a, it's a patchwork of course of material. So in 2012, 2011, 2012, um, there was a new generation, a second story, if you will, of online education. And these are called MOOCs, like I said before. So there's a quote here from the president of MIT, and he says, uh, think of Education X as a printing press and MIT X or Harvard X as the content. Harvard, 
Uh, so what that means is the company Education X goes to Harvard and MIT and they convince them to make online classes which are then put on the, the Education X website together and students can access these classes through the Education X website. And so Education X is made out made up of I think five universities right now. Harvard, MIT, California, Berkeley, and Texas. And Wellesley, one more. Yeah. And Wellesley. It's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's small. Uh, and then the other company, Coursera, has um, 33 universities, including most of the United States, but also Canada, France, Israel, Australia, Australia so from different countries. And they have over 200 classes now. Uh, and what is different? Why is this a different generation or a different uh, story of online education? The first thing is the user experience, which, is, which means that it's a lot easier to use. It's com the complete courses. Everything is, on, is contained in the platform. And uh, they have a lot more materials. They have uh, lectures, plus readings, plus discussion forums, plus quizzes, plus exams plus, you know, projects, everything is, is there in one package, sorry. Next is um, the community and scalability. So, with a hundred thousand people taking the same course at the same time, with an active discussion forums forum, you can talk to people, you can share your ideas, you can ask for help. And you can set up meetings with people in your city and create a community of, you know, learning. And finally, I think the most important difference is the attitude behind it. So it's a complete change of attitude from one university offering its own courses for money to universities and these platforms actively trying to promote education, you know, worldwide. So, um, the prof uh, president of MIT says again, uh, this place is rich with, the knowledge, with knowledge, and the world is hungry for knowledge. A lot of people don't have access to it, and we are trying to create that access. So MIT is trying to create access to its courses for everybody. 
Ve mesela burada bir sitat var gene MIT'nin prezidentinden. O diyor ki, bizim bu derset elimle birikle zengindir. Ama dünya elime birliğe ihtiyaç duyuyor. Ve birçok insan, çok heyli insanın bu birliğe çıkışı yok. Bizim ettiğimiz ise hem insanlara, hem insanların bu birliğe elime çıkışını kendi elimden edilir. Yeah, and the mission, the mission of Coursera is we want to empower people with education that will improve their lives, the lives of their families, and the communities they live in. So that this öz hayatlarını, öz ailelerin hayatlarını ve onların şu ikman hayatlarını yeni seviyeye alırsın. And and this is amazing, this is wonderful, and this gives many many opportunities to everybody. But there's one problem. Yani bu aslında yakıcı bir şey değil. Gençleri imkanlar açıyor, yaradır. Ancak bence bu bir problem var. So on one hand, um, this Jeff uh, Selling, an editor from the Chronicle of Higher Education, he says that this is a huge change, this is titanic shifts in how education is going to happen in the future. Um, but on the other hand, uh, Carlos Martinez, who's a professor of electronics in El Salvador, says after he experienced one class, he was amazed by it. And he tried to get other people to do it, other people, other professors at his university. So, ben başka bir profesör, madam var, El Salvador'da elektronik profesör Carlos Martinez. O mesela bu muhtarın birinde iştirak edip ve o korku. So he tried to get other people to use these courses, but but it was he found it very difficult, and so he said. I fear that these, these, this MOOC, these amazing resources, will not benefit the developing world as much as it benefits the developed wor world. Um, and, and that's why I want to leave you today. If, if you have any questions and discussion, I can explain exactly how this works and how you can use this, and also, you know, talk about how these courses can be used in Azerbaijan, for example. Thank you, that's it.